this video sponsored to you by The Offspring. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. But I do love The Offspring, and they have been stuck in my head. What's up, guys? MTG Jedi here. We are talking Void Champions today on the channel, and we are going to go react and uh, compare notes with Ash on his top 20 Void Champions in the game. I'm very interested to see this video. Um, it was sent to me this morning, and I, I'm very interested to see how my opinions match up with his. So I'm going to play some clips from his video. I'll link the full video down in the comments below so that you can go check that full version out for yourself. I would encourage you to head over to his channel, but you may have already seen that already. And let's jump into the video. Let's see where he's starting off, where his thought process is, and then I'll give you my thoughts as we go along as well. Today we're going to rank the top 20 Void champions inside the game from 20 all the way to 1. Any guesses who number 1 will be? Don't. Do not fast forward this video. I'll give you a little clue though. It is a female character as far as I'm aware. Anyway guys, let's just jump into it here. Quick disclaimer as we go into champion number 20 is on lists like this, I tend to snub and exclude nukers. Oh boy, he better not be excluding my dude Leo on this. Top 20 voids in the game, Leo had better be on this list. I mean, void legendaries, there's so many good ones, or excuse me, void champions, not all legendary, including the first champion on the list. But I tend to kind of err on the side of support or just kind of crazy special niche champions versus nukers because there's so many nukers. So shout out to Leo, shout out to, uh, to Jirgid. Uh, they're not on the list, but they're incredible. Baron, like they're Turvold, there's a lot of them. Uh, no Leo, no Georgia no Baron. Turvold I can see being outside of the top 20, maybe even Baron outside of the top 20, but Leo and Georgid outside the top 20 is insane to me. I cannot imagine that many other champions that I would want to have other than two of the best nukers in the game. Am I wrong? Like, let me know your feedback. I want to hear from you guys. I, I'll always respect your opinions and thoughts. Let me know in the comments below my opinions, Ash's opinions. Tell me your opinions. But what? And I just didn't want to have it all nukers. So anyway, I, I love those guys. Anyway, number 20 is going to be Demitha, guys. Uh, and there are some nukers on the list, too. Okay, so I don't know. It just maybe is it just me, but I have a problem with including epics on this list. Top 20 void champions in the game. You're telling me that you would rather have a Demitha on your account than Leo or Georgid. I feel like like he's. He's not wrong, Demitha's amazing, but like now there's so many block damage um, or unkillable champions in the game. I mean, not so many, but there's a lot of them. You can't be serious about Demitha over Georgian and Baron and Leo, right? Demitha is amazing, and I didn't pick her just to be cute with an with an epic champion. There are a few epics and also a rare. Uh, go figure who that's going to be. I think Demitha is just amazing. Uh, she's she's great because she's blocked damage uh, on a three turn cooldown with the continuous heals. She's one of the more capable healers inside the entire game. She has buff extension as well. This heals really good in the A three. Uh, with the continuous heal. I mean, she's just an amazing support champion despite the nine levels on the A1. I mean, come on, come on. But Demitha is just one of the most used epics out there and uh, she had to make the list even over some of those like incredibly OP legendaries. Uh, so Demitha comes in at number 20. At number 19 on the list, guys, is going to be Necret the Great. Uh, massive fan of this dude. I think he is more of an arena champion, uh, but he can obviously be used anywhere. When I say more of, I mean like that's where he's known for in the end game. Uh, but certainly if you pull a Necret, I mean, you can pretty much use, <laughs> use a Necret anywhere, including like most of the Doom Tower bosses as well. Okay, I do love the Necret pick here. I don't think he should be like number one in the game, but he's a ridiculous champion. I don't recommend using him on most of the Doom Tower bosses, but like Eternal Dragon, where he has that really good decrease attack, I think that's helpful for a lot of players if you have him. But his main spot's going to be Arena. 
I've always wanted to test him in Hydra, but with so few people having him, I just didn't know if that would be relevant or not. But yeah, absolutely. That That's a great pick. I totally agree with Ash on that one. As someone to support your team and as, as well as somebody uh, to help with an ally attack, to help get those A1s out there, those debuffs, whatever, right? So uh, he has the amazing uh, block buffs, ally protection and, or debuffs, excuse me, ally protection and a strengthen. Uh, ally protection can't be removed. He has the ally attack with allies under protection with an extra turn if nobody's killed. He has a triple hitter with decreased attack on his A1. And he has this places of block debuffs, a strengthen and an ally protect for six turns uh, that can't be removed at the start of each uh, round. So in the beginning of an arena battle, uh, just a really, really special champion. Certainly unique. All right, guys, number 18 on the list is the rare that we alluded to earlier. And of course, it's Cold Heart, man. All right. While I agree that Cold Heart is insane and everybody should max more than one of her, probably. I have four Cold Hearts leveled up on my main account. I leveled up the first one I got on the free to play ASAP, but I don't think she's top 20. You can't tell me that you'd rather have a Cold Heart than the majority of these Void Legendaries. I mean, like, I'd rather have a Cold Heart than a Jingwan, but, like, he's not on this list. So, no shade to Jingwan, I guess, but I don't think that she belongs on this list. Tell me I'm wrong. And again, just like Demitha, I'm not putting Cold Heart on this list just to be, oh, yeah, just throwing a rare on there, you know, give the people what they want. Nah, I really think, I know that Cold Heart is just a top champion in the game. I mean, she's the best rare in Raid Shadow Legends by a mile. I use her in the end game. I use her on my account, which I spent way too much money on this stupid game, right? And I still use her. She's on my main Fire Knight Hard 10 team. Fire Knight Hard is the most difficult dungeon in the game, guys. Uh, or it's certainly up there, right? Coming in at number 17 on our list, guys, is going to be Tawana Rock. I love me some Tawana Rock. First of all, aesthetically, I just love kind of the desert vibe of Tawana Rock. Anyway, she got decreased speed on the A1. She got a block buffs with a debuff spread, decreased attack as well. One of the better Hydra moves on the A2. Okay, yeah, I agree with the Tawana Rock pick here. I like the placement on the list. I like the uh, explanation of her being ridiculous in Hydra, uh, especially with this A2, but the whole kit is really well suited for Hydra, and she's part of some of the best teams in the game for that game mode. I know she can be used in a lot of other places as well, but she's just so, so good in Hydra. I think that this is a, this is a great pick. She got increased de uh, defense and speed on the same three turn cooldown on the A3, and then removing a random buff from all allies at the start of each turn. You know, you got a runner and relentless. You got her, you can get the double turn, ergo the double buff removal, or a quadruple if they're under continuous heal uh, on that passive. She also has accuracy in all battles by 70. She's placing a continuous heal on the A1, so she's already going to be supercharging that passive to some extent. Uh, great base stats there as well. So, Toronto Rock, you can argue maybe even a snub having her all the way down at 17 number 16 is going to be another epic champion guys it's god seeker and neary oh again no definitely no god seeker top 20 voids in the entire game no is she amazing yes am i using her in all of my sacred order stuff for faction games yes but should she be top 20 definitely not should you build her if you have her on your account Yes, and you should probably have her in your Sand Devil team. You should be farming Sand Devil if you're not, and you should probably be using God Seeker. She's great for so much of content in the game, but not top 20 voids. What? You can really make a strong case she's the best epic in the game, guys, and I wouldn't disagree with you. Coming in at number 15 on the list, guys, is going to be a champion that, oh, I made a video talking about how bummed out I was that I did not fuse Emic Trunkheart, man. I'm still regretting it. Can you tell? All right. Yeah, um, you probably shouldn't skip good fusions like that. 
I totally agree. If I skipped him, I would regret it. I've been using him in my cadaver team for Hydra, and obviously I'm going to be using him as my main clan boss champion on the free-to-play account, but he is really, really good and definitely not in the top 20. No, I do not think he's top 20. Maybe top 30, but I don't even know then. He's great, don't get me wrong, he's amazing, but I don't think he's top 20 material. Emic's so cool, dude, he's so good, he's fast, he's got great base stats, he's got an increased value of shields on this champion, uh, can't exceed another 10k HP, an AoE with a shield, but on a three turn cooldown, decrease the cooldown of all allies skills by one turn, Ooh, 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 that's a really nasty addition to a great shield ability on that A2. Uh, and then, of course, what he's known for being a unkillable on a four-turn cooldown with the taunt as well. So single target enemies have to have to target him, right? Uh, and then a shield on himself uh, as well. The passive is whenever attacked while under a shield has a 75% chance when booked of increasing the cooldown of a random skill in the attacker by two turns. So he's got control. Whenever an ally's HP drops below 20%, increase the damage dealt by that ally by 20% as well, which jives really well with the unkillable, man. He is the best unkillable champion in the game. I don't even think it's close. Uh, with all apologies to Man Eater, we love you, Man Eater, right? And they're, they've got a different kit, but does, it's stacked, man. Emic is stacked with all those extras kind of added on there, right? Ooh, ooh. Okay, guys. Next up is going to be not Skinwalker, but Lizard Man. And I don't have this dude, but boy, do I wish I did. He looks scary, man. This dude is nasty. Very fast. Good base stats, right? He's a really interesting combo of Reviver, Support, and Damage. Man, I'm unsure about this Sulfurion pick. I think he's an amazing champion, and I would love to have him on any account. But I just don't know about him in the top 20. Let me know what you think. I don't have him, and I haven't done a lot with him. I've seen some people with good results, and I think the combination of HP Burn and Revive is great because then he can like slot in to like a Hydra team, for example, or he could go give you survivability and in some interesting PVE content. But I obviously he's not a PVP champion. He does look freaking cool, and I wouldn't mind having him, but I don't know if he's, like, is he really better than Tuhanarok? Is he better than all of the nukers that were left off this list? That's a question mark for me, but I think if he's not in the top 20, he would be close. Uh, he's got turn meter fill on his A1, turn the fill, if turn the, the fill meter of all allies of this champion when attacking targets under a burn, 10% turn meter fill on that A1 on all allies. He's got an HP burn on all enemies for three turns on a three turn cooldown when you book him out, and then instantly activates HP burns on those enemies, then plays a shield on all allies. Okay, well, that's an ability. It's an activation. Three turns, and then the shield as well. And then he's got, as I said, an AoE revive. 50% HP, 40% turn meter with the extra turn. You guys know I'm a big, big sucker for extra turn abilities in this game, man. It's on a five-turn cooldown. And then I'm not going to read it all to you guys, but he's got a sick passive as well. Uh, man, he's, he's not my most wanted. We'll get to those in a bit. But he's up there. This guy seems really, really nasty, guys. All right, number 13, guys. I think this champion, no one puts her on their top list. I don't know why. Rio Bone Spear is so good, man. She really, really is. All right, putting Rio in the top 20 is very interesting. I actually really like that pick, and I do agree with him. People underrate her in terms of how good she is. Um, being that I have her on the free-to-play account and the main account, I use her in completely different ways on both accounts, and she's ridiculously good. I often tell people, or ask them rather, do you have a Rio? Uh, for a variety of different dungeons and different spots in the game, she's really amazing. And so let's see why Ash thinks 
she should be in this top 20, but I think that she definitely should be, but I would probably put her at like number 20 though. She'd be close to outside the top 20, but I think that she deserves to be there. She's got a continuous, uh, two continuous heals uh, on the A1 or one plus an a bonus one for all allies with less than 30% HP. She's got like half the debuffs in the game on her A2 ability and it hits really hard, including stun on the A2 ability all on a three turn cooldown. She got one of the best cleanse abilities in the game straight up on the A3 perfect body. Three turn cooldown, you've got a cleanse, you've got block debuffs for two turns, and then you've got a big girl heal, 35% plus five for each debuff removed all on that ability. When receiving any debuff, instantly transfers them from this champion back to the attacker. <laughs> and that's on a three turn cooldown. It's a great passive in addition to an amazing kit already. Uh, very weird. Ally attack and faction crypts very weird aura does not seem to fit her really uh, But hey, it's it's good for faction wars, I guess and shadowkin, but either way Rio comes in at number 13 on the list uh, I just think the world of her great anywhere you need heals and cleansing. I mean, she's got your back, right? She's very very good and now time for a little break welcome to intermission Number 12, guys, is Seer. And this will be the last epic on the list. And I think she's the, you know, the highest. The time that she saves with Karma Burn on these high-level dungeons, hard dungeons, I, I can't stop thanking her every day, right? I still use Seer teams even over Poison Combust. Okay, I'm trying to be serious right now because I, I need to react to this Seer stuff. But I, all right, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. But anyway, Seer definitely does not belong on this list. She, it's not even nearly as good as she used to be. You don't need her for much content in the game. She's still S tier for Doom Tower, but other than that, you don't even need her for most of the dungeons, really, because you're just progressing through up to 25 so that you can get to hard mode. I mean, tell me that I'm wrong, I guess, but I don't think she belongs in the top 20. She's an amazing arena nuker against a go second team, against a team with a lot of buffs. She can just evaporate everybody. Uh, I love Seer. Coming in at number 11, we don't have to go far here, guys. Number 11 on the list is going to be Warlord. How the mighty have fallen. I kid. Everybody's so good from here on out. Like, every champion from here on out is SS tier, in my opinion, obviously. I don't know how to rank Warlord, and I assume Yumiko's going to be on the list as well in the, in the next couple picks, because those two champions, like, should be going down in value with Mythical Champions. Once more people have Mythicals, then that is going to be less valuable. I would say Yumiko should be hopefully higher up on the list here because her reset ability, you know, alongside of a Kaimar type of situation, allows you to do crazy things in the game. But Warlord specifically, I think I would rather put him down further on the list maybe 19 or 18 um, rather than up here, but still obviously an amazing champion. And if they don't have mythic champions, he's busted, obviously. Uh, I'm just going by my personal preference order and their overall utility in the game, different, different areas that you can use them. Now you can use anybody on the list basically anywhere because they're that good, but Warlord is known to be more of an arena champion, but you can still, I mean, you can still get so much utility out of this guy every, anywhere, right? Imagine pulling a Warlord as one of your first champions in the game. Yeah, Pretty OP. He's got this A3 Orcish Rituals, putting every this, all their skills on cooldown. Also has a 60% chance when booked to fully de deplete each target's turn meter. This is all on a four turn cooldown, guys. It's, it's bananas, this ability, right? And then Protection of Gods is a great buff. It's a block debuff on all allies for one turn on a three turn cooldown. Then a shield, 30% of his max HP, plus a heal. So he's got a shield and a heal and a block debuffs all on a three turn cooldown with that incredible A3 ability. Ooh, Warlord, maybe I should have put you higher, buddy. Every time I look at your kit, I'm reminded how amazing you are. All right, new champion alert, guys. The second new champion here on the list. Really, really cool, really special champion. It is Shuzen 
the Valorous. Spear of Providence on her A1. I'm gonna go through her entire kit because odds are a lot of you maybe aren't familiar. She's fairly new. Uh, block active skills for two turns. This is on a 50% land rate, not too bad. Has a 100% chance to steal 20% of the target's turn meter if they're already under that block active skills. Solid A1, could lock somebody out in the arena. On the A2, target an ally, three turn cooldown. If that target ally is not under a sheep debuff, plays an increased attack, increased crit rate, increased crit damage on them for two turns, then activates a give extra turn effect on the target ally. Okay, I absolutely agree this champion should be on the list. Shu Zen seems so busted, I can't even you know, understand how she is this good. This is an ability that I've stated in multiple videos that I think should be in the game that give a turn to an ally, and she has it. So, Plarium, good job listening again. Now maybe you want to start listening about Primal Shards. But she is so, so good because of this. You just run no speed on your nuker and then let them take a turn. I was going to make a video on her, actually. Um, so let me know if you want to see that. But this is an incredible champion. Ooh, this is kind of why I put her like towards the top of the list. She's number 10, right? Because A, she's removing sheep. The first champion who can remove sheep debuffs from an ally. But B, the give extra turn ability. That is so strong. I mean, picture, I don't know, like your favorite nuker, whoever the heck it is, right? Picture you just coming in there after they nuke and you immediately give them an extra turn and you nukes them again with, with their other AOE or whatever, you know? Basically, any champion that's doing something amazing, she immediately gets them, you know, lets them do that again. Very cool mechanic. Uh, I would have loved this champion. And then on the Charge of the Valorous or A3 ability, it's very reminiscent of a Lysandra's A3. Fills a turn of all allies by 20%. Plays the big version of increased speed on them. 100% chance of decreasing the target's turn all uh, of excuse me the turn meter of all enemies by 20%. And then places decreased speed debuff on all of them for two turns. What a great control ability. Now, Lysandra has a 30%, but no decreased speed. You can argue which one is better or worse. Either way, it's one of the better kind of controlling abilities affecting both allies and enemies out there in the game. And on the passive, increases champion's accuracy equal to the amount of speed they have. That is just the cherry on top of this champion. She's doing all these things in terms of, uh, you know, affecting their, their decreased speed and affecting their turn meter. But that's, you know, in block active skills, right? So she has a few things that require accuracy. Obviously, accuracy is very important. But she has a base 110 speed and very good on the defense and, and HP as well. We can just build her to be super fast and she gets all that as accuracy. Ooh, I really, really like this champion. Very, very cool. So next, guys, we have, well, simply one of the best in the biz. It is none other than Cardio, right? Oh, yeah. Cardio on the list. Absolutely. Not only are we using him in Fire Knight hard, we're using him in Hydra. He's ridiculous in Arena. I have just been so, so happy using him on my account he's ridiculously fun and ridiculously good definitely belongs on this list i would probably build multiple if i had them he's so so good cardio 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 we absolutely love you man what don't you do you want an ally attacker who has increased crit rate increased crit damage everybody joins up on the attack decrease the cooldown of the skill by one turn if the enemy is killed from the attack a nice little add-on there all on a four turn cooldown sure you want a full cleanse? He's got it. You want block debuffs. You want to revive on death. Revive on death protected, no less, right? He is a jack of all trades. You can use this dude on any ally attack team, various Doom Tower bosses, the Griffin, Eternal Dragon, etc. You can use him in the arena. You can use him. I use him in Ice Golem hard. I use him in Fire Knight hard. You can really use this dude almost anywhere. He's that good. He also has a true fear if, uh, against certain targets on his A1, a heal on everybody. Uh, on his A1 as well. A chance of joining in on attacks, speed in all battles. It's Cardio. He's got it all. Number nine is Yumeko. We don't have to go far. I like Yumeko a little bit more than Warlord. 
Okay, yeah, there's the Yumiko pick. I like that quite a bit. She's very, very amazing. And uh, Ash is going to make some great points about her as well. Definitely agree, and she should definitely be on the list. Uh, Yumeko, though, I mean, she's so good in Bommel. Like, she's amazing in the arena. She's amazing as a reset champion, like a la Kaimar. So the fact that she has the Kaimar-esque ability to reset cooldowns on Dance of Time in addition to the decreased cooldown of all, or the increase of all enemy skills like Warlord, it gives her kind of a dual purpose on any team. I use her as a Kaimar type champion on Seer reset teams or Poison Combust reset teams, right? Uh, and then, like I said, Destiny's Mirror makes her perfect. She's basically sending all those bombs back to Bommel. Very good. You can use it in other situations as well. Uh, so, and then the passive, right? Uh, plays a perfect villainous champion for two turns at the start of each round. This champion is immune to all debuffs when they're under a veil or perfect veil. Uh, when it's placed on an enemy, she's going to steal it if Karato's on the same team. And then she's got turn meter steal on the A1. Whew. It's a very, very good kit. Yumeko is just one of the best out there. Number eight on the list, guys, is going to be Lydia. We forget how good Lydia is sometimes because she's uh, not free, but she's, you know, she's a champion that everybody can acquire eventually for beating Faction Wars. No, I, I don't like including Lydia on this list. Uh, I don't like including the free champions on lists like this. You know, whoever else it is that everybody can get. I don't like it because then we are trying to compare free champions with hard to acquire champions. And I don't like it. I'm not arguing that Lydia is not good. She is certainly amazing. Everybody's priority should be Faction Wars in order to get Lydia, and then once you get her, you should build her. She's huge, super awesome, super important. I'm sure Ash is going to say things here that are great about her and good points, but I just don't agree that she should be on this list, or even in the top 20, I don't think. So, like, I would put Venus here instead of Lydia. Venus is ridiculous, and I, I haven't heard anything about Venus today in this video. Where is that? Venus should definitely be on this list. She's ridiculous. she got a lockout ability plus poison sensitivity and block buffs on a three-turn cooldown on her A3. She can deny revive attempts. Super annoying in the arena. Very effective against a boss with minions, a la Ice Golem. I know I use her on my Ice Golem team for that reason. She will deny the revive. Instead, she'll revive herself if she's dead or allies if they're dead. It's a beautiful Beautiful passive, very unique. And then the Sirens Will, I've said it so many times before, so I will be brief. It's one of the best abilities in the game. It's a decreased defense and a weaken on all enemies, a la Venus, a la Dracomorph, a la Bellinor. And we get the big version of strength and an increased speed on all allies. Ooh, that's really good. Really good, great base stats. She's an all-around champion. You can use her pretty much anywhere. Obviously, the arena. She has the best arena uh, aura for uh, for resistance in the game as well. A hundred. Uh, really, just incredible champion. All right, number seven on the list, guys. I think a lot of you are going to have a problem with me ranking Taurus the Fierce all the way down at seven. Uh, y yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to have a problem with ranking him at seven. Yeah. Totally, totally. What other six champions are you going to put above him? Like, if you're going to put Marichka above him, fine. If there's a couple others, maybe. But seven? Seven? Absolutely not. And what did, what, is he, what did he just say? Or maybe he's about to say it. He doesn't have Terrace. So, obviously, he doesn't know. He doesn't know? Does he? He should. Terrace is so ridiculous that you can't imagine how good he is until you have him. Same goes for Acrisio, which I would assume is above here at the top of this list. There are some Void Champions that you can't compare anything like them unless you actually have them on your account. And Terrace rocking out over here is exactly one of those champions. You cannot know how good he is until you have him. He is on an entire, uh, he's on a whole nother level. 
He is so good. Like, I don't need to go on and on here. You already know this. You know this, okay? I'm getting fired up because you know I use him all the time on my account. I used him in the Hydra Clash. I, I've used him in videos when you guys got mad at me because he's too good. I use him in Live Arena maybe making people mad. I just can't say enough about this guy. He should be, in my opinion, top three. Yeah, he, he's definitely top three. I mean, obviously he's on the list, and that's the most important thing, but seven? No, 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 no. But, I don't know, go ahead and look at the rest of the list and see what you think. So, uh, but let me know, let me know where you rank Taurus and Marichka. I don't have Taurus still. I really wish I did. The guy's amazing, he's hard to kill. He does so much damage. He's got a two turn stun. He, I mean, constant pressure can be used anywhere he's a great hydra damage dealer of course again he's known for the arena he's so much better even than he already is with marichka on the same team he's got a fear on all enemies at the start of each turn depending on the faction of course uh just a really and in all incoming damage from skills reduced by 50 percent on the poise passive oh this guy's so annoying to go against i wish i had him uh, i put him at number seven at number six i put marichka the unbreakable uh she's Oh, she's just something else, guys. She really is. Okay, yeah, Marichka right above Terrace. I would flip them. Personally, I think Terrace is better than Marichka. But, I mean, she's super annoying with another Reviver. It's just really hard to kill the team. Her whole kit's really good, but I would definitely rank Terrace above her. Let me know what you think about that, though. Uh, one of my favorite arena champions in the game, but you can use her, you know, Hydra healer, anywhere healer in support, right? Uh, another ally's gonna join her A1 on the A2. This is... I think it's the best, it, it's up there with the best heals in the game, besides like the Sinesha type uh, heals out there. This is so good. I mean, Wither doesn't even have a heal this 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 good, right? 40% of this champion's max HP, but we can scale her HP up to up to 80 or 90 or 100 or even 110 or 20k, depending on where you are in the game. And that's enough, 40% of that is going to be enough to heal, completely heal most of the other champions on your team. Uh, so that's why that heal is so good. She also has a, a strength in this protected. Cannot be removed on all allies. This is all on a three-turn cooldown, guys. Uh, great shield. 20% of her max HP again. She's got a cleanse. Extra turn if there's five or more debuffs removed. Uh, that's amazing, too. <laughs> Revives all allies <laughs> uh, with a 50% HP and a 75% turn meter whenever she's killed. So annoying in the arena. Uh, block damage anytime an ally receives a bomb, poison, or HP burn. Oh, Marichka. Oh, you are something. The best speed tied for the best speed in all battles aura in the game at 24%. Great base stats, as you would expect. Marichka comes in at number six. Number five on the list, guys, is going to be Siffy, the Lost Bride. Ranking Siffy above Terrace Marichka interesting i don't know i mean obviously cv's an amazing champion but like we can't rank her above terrace marichka can we i don't think i would do that no i think i would put her definitely below the two of them but obviously she's an amazing champion one champion that i still don't have but uh, you know i've used her lots of times on other people's accounts but i'd love to actually get her on one of my accounts but yeah obviously see if he's amazing but definitely not above them though right ah uh, intermission <laughs> One of the most annoying and one of the best control abilities, I said it, one of the best control abilities for the arena in the game on her A1. Uh, Curse of Longing, usually we just skip over A1s, but the fact that we can just basically chain sleep the opponents who have 50% or more turn meter because it can't be resisted, this debuff cannot be resisted, is one of the most infuriating ways to lock down your opponent or be locked down yourself in the arena. Uh, definitely cannot overlook or, or, or understate, I should say, uh, how good that A1 is. She got blocked debuffs for two turns, increased defense, turn meter fill, increased speed on the A2. She's reviving an ally with a full turn meter 
increase attack increase crit rate and she's healing everybody heals each ally by 10 percent of their max hp at the start of their turn she also has a chance of removing freeze and fear from each ally start of the turn or everything from rotos she's also got resist in all battles by 80 the best resist all battle i think in the game or it's up there at least right rosin's arena only right um 114 base speed, one of the fastest champions in the game. All that and one of the fastest champions in the game. Siffy, the Lost Bride, ladies and gentlemen, comes in at number five. Number four on the list is still, for me, I don't know how you guys feel about this. If you still think, would you take Krisk or Siffy? Like, who would you put higher on your list? Personally, I would put Krisk higher. I think he is ridiculous and a cheat code for... Hydra, obviously, I don't see people using him very many places anymore other than Hydra, but tell me if you are one of those people who does. I think Krisk is definitely still ridiculous and definitely deserves to be near the top of the list. Krisk just does so much in basically every area of the game. I want to start with his passive. At the start of each round, he has a shield on all allies equal to 50% of his max HP, a big, beefy, girthy shield coming at you, and then 100% chance of placing the big version of decreased defense and decreased attack on the attacker when he's hit with no cooldown. Wow, so he's a debuffer and a shield every single round? That's incredible. An AoE decreased speed on his A1, another AoE with ally protect, two continuous heals on himself, and while we're at it, let's increase the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. It's funny, I've gone over Chris Kit like a hundred times here on the channel, it never gets old. Provoke on all enemies, increase defense on this champion, increase speed on all allies on a three turn cooldown. Ah, oh, Chris, you are amazing. Guys, it is, uh, next up is another one of my most wanted. It's Grazur. Yeah, Grazur's one of my most wanted, too. I think he's really an amazing champion. I'm not sure I would have him in the top five. Uh, like, some people have even said they didn't like him when they were trying him out in their Hydra teams. I'm pretty sure they're wrong. But also, at the same time... I'm not sure he's top five material, but we did ban him from the Hydra Clash because he's just that good. I would love to have him on my account. He is really, really good, but I don't think I'd have him in the top five. He would definitely be top 10, though. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Chris, different, but... I don't know. They kind of look the same a little bit, even though they're different uh, factions. An AoE with a shield on all allies except this champion, based on his defense. On the A1, defend the wall. On the A2, attacks all enemies with a heal. Increase the duration of all buffs on all allies. A la Krisk on his A2. The only difference is it's an enemy max HP ability. <laughs> so he can deal insane damage on this ability. And then let none pass, an AoE on a three turn cooldown, 100% provoke. Uh, increase resistance, increase defense on all allies. Whenever this champion is attacked, he heals all allies except this champion by 70% of the damage received. 35 uh, 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 received against boss attacks has no cooldown. He's got a little uh, Volgoth in him. And then an unkillable on top of all of that. The Skull Crown unkillable they added to it, the Leo unkillable. Oh my god. God, this guy is insane. Defense in all battles by 33%. He is one of my most wanted champs in the entire game. But I still, I still put Mithrala Lifebane ahead of all those amazing champions. Mithrala Lifebane, the free champion from Hydra, is ranked above Terrace and Marichka and Sifi? Stop. What? Stop it. Stop. That's He's going to come out and say that's a joke, right? You guys have been watching this channel for any amount of time. You know how high I am on Mithrala. I'll keep it simple. I'll keep it quick because most of you guys are already familiar on this champion. Okay. So Ash is serious that Mithrala Lifebane is the number two void champion in the entire game. Mithrala. No. Definitely not. She's not better than half of the champions on this list. I wouldn't even have her on this list at all. Don't get me wrong. She's amazing. Okay? She's absolutely amazing. And he makes some good points. But, like, what? 
Number two, you're telling me you would take Mithrala Lifebane over Sifi, Terrace, Maricha, Krisk, Leo, Baron, uh, Georgid, not even on the list, those nukers, and you would take Mithrala over them. No, 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 no. Got poison on the A1. She's got a hex AoE, increased defense, increased attack, same ability. And then she has a cleanse on a three-turn cooldown, big version of strengthen, a big shield on a three-turn cooldown. And then she's converting her accuracy, or excuse me, inc increases her resistance based on her accuracy. So you can't land a debuff on her, just max out her, her accuracy as high as you can go. Uh, she's got the petrification, the only, and, and the only champion in the game who has it. Got great base stats. I mean, to find the increased defense and the increased attack and a hex lander and a cleanser and a shield and a uh, petrification and poisons. She does so much. She does so much. More support than any champion in the game for my money. Number one on the list, guys, is Acrisia. Yeah, she got the enemy. I mean, they've added Nut to the game. They've added Grazer to the game. So there's a few more enemy max HP champions, but still none that have it on every single ability. I mean, listen, the knock on Acrisia is you don't use her in PvP, right? She's not a PvP champ. Number one being Acrisia is uh, justifiable, but I also don't know if I would put her at number one. I think that I would put Terrace or Krisk at number one and not her, but like, it, that's semantics. Like, certainly Acrisia is one of the best champions in the entire game, and she deserves to be at the top of this list. So if we wanted to like get into the nitty gritty, we could discuss whether or not she's number one, but she definitely belongs at the top of the list, unlike Mithrala, um, you know, definitely not. But Acrisia, you know, an amazing champion. She makes Hydra easy mode. She helps you farm the dungeons much quicker. She is ridiculous. One of my number one most wanted champions on my account. And I think that she's ridiculous. So I'm not going to argue too much with putting her at number one. And she's all enemy max HP. But she's by far and away, for my money, the best nuker in PvE inside Raid Shadow Legends. Frankly, I don't think there's anybody that close, right? In terms of just raw damage. Enemy max HP everywhere. I mean, she's shielding herself. She's she's stealing target turn meter. 100% of it at that on the A3. So she got turn meter steal. It can't be resisted. It, uh, unresistable 100% turn meter. What? I mean, decreases the damage taken from AoE attacks by 50%. It's so easy to keep this champion alive. It's so easy. Uh, Acrisia, number one. There it is, guys. So, yeah. I think that the list, there's a lot of things that I disagree on on the list. But definitely, like, the top five, top ten, way, way, way would be different for me. So, let me know what your order would be. Let me know how you feel about all these things. And then, if you're still here, then uh, you're a trooper. And I want to leave you with some super big snubs, I think, that should probably be on the list. So, let me dive into a couple of those. Excluding, we already mentioned the nukers from the beginning of the video. They should definitely be on this list. But here's a couple more who should probably be on the list as well. I mentioned Venus earlier, but she should definitely be on the list. If you're not using her on your account, you should be. This decreased defense and weaken combined with HP burn and poisons is absurd. And then if you're using her with Cupidus, the remove all buffs is ridiculously good too. She should be on this list for me automatically. It's so sad that Romantu is not in this discussion. I wouldn't have had him on this list because, again, he's an obtainable champion by everyone. Admittedly, a very difficult champion to obtain. But with the Sheep debuff, he just is not very good. And that's super sad. I would have been tempted to put Tumisia on the list, but I think she would have been an honorable mention. She's so underrated because of this HP burn and stun and decrease speed is really, really good in all different kinds of content. 
This ability here smacks so hard, and then she has the A1 decrease defense that she puts on before attacking if they're under HP burn. Um, and then her passive here is really sweet as well. So I think she's super underrated, and I always wonder, can you use her in like an arena strategy? But I don't do videos like that because like not that many people have her. I use her all the time on my account though. I'm just absolutely shocked that Supreme Gallic wasn't on this list. He is by far the best of the Supremes, the only one that deserves mention. And this ability here, the AoE HP burn block buffs decrease speed, is one of the best abilities in the game. Period. End of story. He is one of my most wanted champions in the entire game. I would even go so far as to say he's number one. I would rather have him because I love Gallic that much. I would rather have him than any other Void Legendary. And I know Krizzy is amazing, but I would rather have him because he's cool. So he deserved a spot on this list too. I would have put Valkanen as honorable mention, but it's very possible that he should be on this list because he has a ridiculous speed aura and his kit, which I'm not gonna get into because it's super long, I think it's ridiculous. He has insane multipliers. I still want to try him in Hydra because you can sacrifice your champions if you're manualing. I think he is ridiculous. I just don't have enough experience with him to know for sure if he belongs in the top 20, but I think he deserved a mention. And that'll do it for me here today. I think that that's all of the champions that I would mention here. Obviously, Tormund's great. You know, there are a lot of other amazing champions here that are really, really good. But for me, that's the end of the list that should be mentioned for the top 20. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit the like button, because you made it all the way to the end. And if you like this content, make sure to tell me about that in the comments below so that I can do videos like these in the future. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.